said a minute ago, just to reset the room for anybody who might have entered in the last minute or so, we're here to talk about recurring subscriptions and memberships, which is a new feature that was added to Unlock Protocol last week, um, ready for everybody to use. And we think it's a really big deal uh, in the Web3 space, and we're excited about it. And we want to hold this space to share more information about it, get questions, comments, uh, ideas, inspiration, whatever is on your mind on this topic. So um, I think since we have a couple folks who've asked to speak already, I'll go ahead and uh, invite some other voices on uh, from the community. Um, Dennison, would you like to come on and introduce yourself and just say hello, maybe mention where you're, where you're calling from and um, yeah, why you're excited about this? Sure, sure. Yeah, so um, my name is Dennison. I'm from Tally. We are um, a DAO platform that is where you can like start, build, and grow your communities. Um, we are really excited about recurring memberships um, and subscriptions because something that people haven't really thought about much yet is membership dues for DAOs, right? We, we kind of have this like one and done mentality at the moment for membership in DAOs. You like bought the NFT or you got the token and you're in. Um, but, you know, in the real world, there's a lot of things that look like DAOs, but they have recurring membership dues required to stay a part of it, right? And certainly when you think about long-term DAO health, you can kind of imagine that for many of these organizations to last into, you know, into the future, they're going to need continuous like replenishment of their, their treasury funds, right? So we are really excited about the idea here of being able to use Unlock Protocol to power membership in DAO. Because when you look at these social DAOs, you know, for example, Pool Suite, or FWB, where, you know, your membership is just holding the NFT or holding the token, you could kind of imagine that these might operate better as um, memberships where you have to pay, you know, monthly dues to continue going to the parties or continue going to the cool events. That way, the organizations don't have to rely upon speculations or like something, token price as an opportunity to like cash out and get revenue. Um, and I think that that is pretty exciting and could hope open up an entirely new class of DAOs. Absolutely. Well, thank you for bringing the DAO perspective to the conversation today. I'm sure that will be one that many other folks share, certainly one that we share at Unlock since we have an Unlock DAO. And yeah, we're, we're excited for the application of um, this technology within that context. So thanks for being here. We'd love to hear more as the conversation continues about from your perspective and, you know, how, how you envision that playing out uh, more specifically. And um, as we kind of, now that we have a, a, pers a specific perspective from one of the community members, I thought we'd just um, back up one step and, uh, just lay the foundation for what we're talking about here. So maybe if we could have Julian, who's the founder and CEO of Unlock, um, just have a couple minutes on how do these things work? How does recurring subscriptions and memberships work? Uh, how do they work differently than what we were doing before the implementation of this new technology? Um, yeah, and, and what, what does this look like today, uh, which is different from last week before this launch? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so thanks for uh, thanks for asking the question first. Um, so I think everybody's familiar with the context of the lock, uh, which is the membership contract that a creator deploys. Um, and it could be a creator or an organization, a DAO, uh, as Denison just highlighted. Um, that smart contract is the membership contract. And as part of the latest upgrade that we shipped uh, about a month ago now, uh, we added the ability for um, memberships to be renewed. Uh, let's talk about this. Uh, first, when somebody, a creator or a community deploys the smart contract, they decide on the length of each membership. It's a matter of a multiple of seconds. So it can be one second. I don't think that's very useful, but it could be one second. And it can be up to what we call unlimited, which is practically speaking, the largest maximum um, unsigned integer that you can make in a smart contract. It's you know longer than the number of, I mean, that number is larger than the number of seconds that have happened since the Big Bang. So no risk to ever get there. Um, and so when a creator sets the duration on their lock, it means that every person who's going to get a membership 
is going to start with a membership of that duration. So if I create a membership on my site uh, and I say 30 days, well, everybody who gets their membership, whether it's today, tomorrow, or the day after, they're going to get 30 days from the minute um, their, their transaction gets mined. So far, so good. Now, what we've introduced in the latest version is the idea of a function called extend first. And the function called extend is basically taking a membership that expires you know, in 30 days and adding the ability to add more time by paying for another month or another week or another year based on what is the base duration here. It's the same NFT, except that this time, the timestamp that's set as the expiration of the NFT is pushed further in the future. So that's one of the things that we've introduced last time. What we've also added as a mechanism is the idea that anyone could extend somebody else's key. Uh, or rather, anyone could leverage the fact that somebody has approved money to be spent on their account to renew the key. So now let's talk about something also that's a bit specific about Unlock. As you know, you can deploy a lock, a smart contract, set the duration, but you can also deploy a lock and set the currency, not, on, not just the price, you know, one, two, three, four, ten, but also the actual currency could be the base currency of the blockchain, ETH on Ethereum, Matic on Polygon, but it could also be also be what you call an ERC twenty, which is uh, one of these coin token that sits on a blockchain. The most famous one that everybody has heard of at this point is USDC, the dollar stable coin um, that is backed by um, Coinbase and, and a few other people. So in practice, if I want to get a membership for a site um, that uh, and the membership is priced, say, 10 USDC, I have first, before I get the membership, to approve USDC to be spent from my account. And so technically speaking, I would actually send two transactions. The first one is like, okay, I approve that smart contract to take my 10 USDC. And then the second transaction would be, okay, now purchase the membership. What we've changed as with this upgrade is the fact that now the approval can be larger than the price of a single membership. So now I can approve, say, 12 times the price of the monthly membership, practically speaking, approving a year of membership, and then buying the first month. I'm only buying the first month. I'm not buying the full year, but I've approved basically the lock to spend up to 12 times the monthly membership. And then when I've done this, basically I get the first membership, it's sent to my wallet, my NFT, it's cool, I can access the content. But now anybody in the network, provided that my membership is expired or soon to expire, basically at the end of the month, could trigger the smart contract and say, hey, smart contract, please go collect another 10 bucks, 10 USDC from Julian's wallet and extend his membership. That is the feature that we've added uh, in the smart contract last month. Does that answer your question, Tim? It absolutely does very well and clearly. Thank you for that explanation. Cool. So now there's a couple more things. Um, obviously, whoever is going to approve this, not approve, uh, trigger this renewal, they're going to have to pay for gas. They're going to be the ones sending the transaction. So what we've also added in the smart contract is the idea of what we call a, a little uh, gas refund. It's basically the smart contract saying, hey, if anybody in the world renews an existing membership, um, we're happy, obviously, as the lock, because we're making a bit more money for that membership. But we'll reward that person with a little bit of share of that uh, of that first purchase. Maybe it's you know ten cents on ten dollars. I don't know what that is. It's enough to cover the gas, and so that's what makes it completely decentralized. Because now anyone can look at a lock, a membership contract, and say, okay, cool. I see that you know Jane Doe's membership is expired or soon to expire. I'm gonna, and I see that she has approved for this to be renewed. So I'm gonna be the one submitting the transaction, paying for gas, obviously but I'm going to get a little kickback from the smart contract. We do think that down the line, the miners themselves are actually going to do that. It won't even be you know, random people uh, or us like we do now at, at Unlock Labs, but the miners will be the one identifying that there is what is called miner extracting value. So value for them in executing transaction, that's going to pay them not only the gas, but the, also the little kickback uh, that the lock, the smart contract gives them. Amazing. 
Thank you, Julian, again, for that course, explanation. I know there's a lot of details in there. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? I want to, uh, um, again, invite folks up to request to speak. And um, if you have any questions about the details of what we're covering, please do ask those so we can um, cover those. And I'm sure if you're thinking the question, you might not be the only one thinking. So if you ask, you might just do a favor for somebody else. Um, since we've kind of covered the, the foundation of what we're talking about here with these recurring memberships and subscriptions with NFTs, particularly how the Unlock Protocol is handling them, um, we have one more folk from the community who asked to come up and, and speak. So I want to give a chance for consumer to blockchain solutions to introduce themselves and um, share what you're working on in this field or any questions. Um, yeah, and just tell us about your project if you'd like. Okay, great. Hi, my name's Ryan. I'm with CDB Solutions and I'm a developer who is currently working on a project to have uh, photography NFTs with a paywall for the for TIFF files, for the high resolution files. And pretty much what I'm doing is the public file will be a preview that's watermarked. And then the file that will be um, behind the unlockable will be the high resolution TIFF file along with uh, additional content that I'll be adding for itineraries of uh, travel itineraries of how to get to these places and basically just a travel agency itinerary that I created I create for every trip that I go on um, and I found unlockable uh, as a game changer because it's going to allow content creators to really have control over their content and um, yeah so I just wanted to hop on Twitter space talk about and ask questions about the, the new functionality. And uh, I want, also want to build on it. Um, I'm not sure, I, I just recently found Unlockable. Previously, I was looking at Dark Block, which was, I guess the same thing, but not as decentralized and open source. Um, and I wanted to figure out how is the file stored outside of IPFS, is there, other options that we could do permanent storage, like on are we? Because, because um, yeah, I think it would be valuable if if we if we could as uh, content creators select the data storage source. Because IPFS, I know if you pin it and you host it yourself, it would be permanent. But right now, it's one of those things that's in the back of my mind for a permanent long term NFT. I think permanent storage would be an important option, also. Um, so I was just wondering, is is there a way that we could store these files permanently on another data storage like we? Yes, absolutely. Um, so technically, the protocol is completely, you know, um, we, we don't worry. I mean, we don't care. It feels rude to say this, but it's, it's not about how files are stored or even if the mechanism that people unlock is you need a file. So yes, mm -hmm. you should definitely be able to host a file, host the content on Arweave, um, and then create a, you know, a, a page uh, or an application that would retrieve that content only if the member, the current visitor, sorry, has the right NFT in their wallet and the right membership. Okay. And, and currently, is uh, the way that it's structured on IPFS, if someone has that hash, is, is the file yes. encrypted on that hash that it downloads it and decrypts it? <clears throat> So that's definitely one of the uh, implementation questions. So yes, if you put the file in clear on IPFS, mm -hmm. arguably someone can find it. Um, mm -hmm. um, if you don't want anyone to find this, or even if they found it to uh, make sure it's encrypted, you would have to use a mechanism for encryption on top of the membership aspect, which is powered by Unlock. Um, um, I think Lit protocol could be used there uh, and would work pretty well in that scenario. OK. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Thanks for those questions. And thanks for sharing about your project and your use case. Again, I think it's really helpful for everybody in the community to hear what everybody else is building, because when you find commonalities, uh, even in the, the needs, even if the projects aren't similar, the needs of projects can be similar. So really appreciate you coming up on stage and sharing about your project and asking questions. Um, Ryan, was there anything else that you want to follow up with on that? Any other details? Um, not off the top of my head, but I'm sure it will come to me as the call goes on. 
Sure. Yeah. Well, we're always, uh, yeah, come on up and you can stay as a speaker and unmute yourself anytime whenever you want to chat. Um, and also find us in Discord. So uh, we have a Discord open 24-7, lots of helpful folks from both the Unlock team and the community who are always ready and willing to answer questions, brainstorm, stuff like that. So um, we have another speaker, Nate, who requests to uh, come up. Nate, you want to introduce yourself? And hey, hey good morning. Questions? Good morning. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I got to say, I'll, I'll try to be real brief here. Basically, I'm, uh, I have a, I'm the founder of a fitness NFT project, right? And so you can imagine my excitement, um, especially when we've had decades, uh, a, a decade-long method for fitness companies, what do they do? They charge subscriptions, right? And that was, that was something real tricky for us. We wanted to bring, you know, workouts uh, so and all the features that you would get with a, a typical fitness membership or an app, rather, uh, but through, through an NFT, right? And while we have, like, our initial drop of, say, 8,000 NFTs that get lifetime, we wanted to provide an option for um, monthly subscriptions, uh, but we still wanted to keep it Web3 and at the same time add on another layer of challenge by making it credit card friendly. So when I came across Unlock Protocol, you can imagine my excitement. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is like this is this is what we were looking for. So I found Unlock Protocol maybe like about a month to two months ago. And I've been steadily watching this whole time, but I haven't really uh, pulled the trigger yet. But when I saw the announcement that re recurring memberships, they're 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 launched now. I'm like, okay, now it's now it's time, and I think it's perfect timing because you know we're still in our um, developing phase as as we as we you know finish the we finalize the foundation of what we're doing and how we want to implement that system. Um, I did want to have I have a quick question because I had the creator dashboard pulled up on my laptop here, and I've been playing around with the test net. Um, I created like a, a test lock on the Rinkv network, and I saw that um, in order to create recurring memberships, you have to enable um, enable reoccurring. I don't know if that was available quite yet on the test network, or is that Ethereum mainnet only? No, no, it is it is available on all of the networks that we support, testnet okay. and production. Um, there is indeed a, a little step uh, that you have to do to enable the recurring on, on the smart contract, by it's just a simple transaction that you send to the lock. Uh, mm. It's basically to enable that payment of the little kickback that I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, it only works, though, I should clarify this, if your smart contract is using an ERC-20 as the base currency. So okay. if you deploy on Rinkeby, it cannot work with the fake ETH. You need to use an ERC-20. There is USDC. Uh, we use one, uh, and that's kind of a joke, not from us, but from people that have built Rinkeby. Uh, we use an ERC-20 called Winas uh, yeah. uh, that you can use there. It's the default one. Uh, so you can use that. So make sure that you have a set a price with your strategy and that you also have an expiration date. If it's unlimited memberships in terms of expiration, well, they will never renew. So you should make sure that you oh, use something right. that's a day, a month, a week, whatever. I mean, it only renews if there's technically an expiration. It would never, it doesn't make sense to renew something that would never expire. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, the two prerequisites uh, for this to work. But then again, yes, uh, Rinkaby, mainnet, obviously, uh, Gnosis Chain slash XDAI, Polygon, uh, Optimism, and then eventually all of the networks that we support. Wow. So, okay. So the Ethereum mainnet does support recurring memberships. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you so much. It, um, I should clarify though, it will be expensive because people have to pay for gas. So you need to make sure that your membership has a large kickback uh, for that oh, to work. For sure. would, you rec uh, would you recommend, or, or how do you feel about having an ETH mainnet collection, right? The, the initial drop, but you know, using USD or something like that as the recurring membership. Do you think that there would be more challenge than solution in that i'm not sure what you're what you're um what you're implying here uh the, so in other words we have uh an initial collection of say eight thousand nfts that you would treat like normal they're not recurring but they they get you access to what we have to offer but additionally we wanted to use unlock protocol but yeah. would it be a challenge what challenges would come um from having a different currency through with the recurring memberships than the oh I, I mean you would use the same for both the recurring i mean you would use a usdc is a good example you use usdc for for all of your membership whether they're recurring or not awesome well that sounds good yeah. i'm very excited and i think i'm gonna get i'm gonna get really into it uh this uh later in this week absolutely Th and so by much. the way i mean not not for your comment but like um um 
one thing, I mean, using uh, ERC-20s as currency is a requirement, but um, and I think uh, a couple of minutes, uh, De Denison made the, made the comment that uh, uh, membership, uh, sorry, membership could be, sorry, DAOs, that's what I'm trying to say, DAOs uh, could use uh, unlocked memberships for their membership, uh, this NFT based. I think that's a brilliant idea. What's really interesting is like if the DAO already has, uh, you know, a social currency as a token, mm -hmm. uh, they could use that as the price for the membership. So instead of charging, you know, USDC, oh, wow. you would say, say your, your DAO has its own, uh, let's say, sports uh, token. I don't know if this is <laughs> the one that you would use, no, but no, like you could charge, say, okay, cool, this is five sports token every month. And then basically people have to uh, purchase these tokens. And so that creates kind of a very interesting dynamic in my mind between the membership, which is kind of tiers, if you want, uh, and then the currency of the of the DAO, of the system, of the of the community that is itself a social coin. And it's very it's very similar to, if you think about this to airlines, right? Like the airline companies, you earn miles, which is kind of a currency thing. It's kind of, you know, you have one, two, five, ten, uh, some. And then there's levels. So, and if you have enough you're actually not spending them but if you haven't if you have enough miles you earn a membership level uh, whether it's you know gold platinum medallion i think that's what they call uh, some of these these days that's incredible i can definitely see the opportunity coming from that for sure absolutely awesome well, thank you nate that was awesome for uh, sharing what you're doing and asking those questions uh ryan did you have another one to follow up on yes i did have a question about royalties for resales um i did see a little bit in documentation where there's just a little bit of uh centralization of if we if, if i had to reach out to open if i listed my nft i'd have to reach out to open seat to add the royalties is is there a way to programmatically add into the smart contract an automatic commission so you say like a, a royalty no matter what marketplace it sells on because that's one problem I currently see with NFTs is there's not a standard for royalties that marketplaces are accepting to automatically pay it when the transaction happens. It's, it's kind of like you, the transaction happens once they want to pay you, then they pay you. Um, and I, I definitely see that as a new thing that I want to build into my NFTs is um, a, a new standard to add automatic royalties based on once the transaction instantly goes to the wallets where the parties need to be paid that's definitely a, a good question um so i know there's an eip that's been submitted uh to standardize how royalties are paid um at this point we don't implement them inside of unlock to be clear um the i mean that doesn't mean that if you again if you go through OpenSea uh or you know rarible or any of these other platforms you can configure royalties to be taken mm -hmm. i should clarify a thing and that's kind of a, a misconception that a lot of people in this space have at this point is Technically speaking, even if your smart contract points to the fact that it supports royalties via this EIP, the transfer function itself has no requirement for fees to be paid on the secondary market. And so if someone was to transfer their NFT, they could do it without paying any fees to the initial um, mentor, if you want, of the contract, uh, to the initial creator. Um, it's kind of a, one of these, uh, you know, um, convenient lies, I'd say, in the NFT ecosystem that we uh, keep repeating. It's like, oh, there's royalties in there. It's actually not quite true. You have to go through a platform or an escrow contract that would actually support that, uh, which, again, is the majority of them right now. My gut feeling, and maybe this is because I'm uh, a day after a pretty sad day, but uh, my hope in the fact that we won't see the emergence of a platform that just bypasses this uh, is pretty low. I think we will see platforms that bypass this uh, and people will go through them because why would they have to pay the royalties if they can go through the free one? Um, that said, um, inside of the unlock contracts, um, because the memberships have an expiration date, We've built a system that allows the owner <clears throat> of the contract to say every time a membership is transferred, maybe we don't take a fee, we can't, because technically the transfer function doesn't have any idea of price being paid, but the smart contract can burn some time. So let me give you an example. Let's say I've got a Netflix account, uh, and I use that to watch Netflix, it's cool, and I'm going to go on vacation, and I want to transfer that to you. And obviously, they're using Unlock now. So basically, I've got 30 days, it's the beginning of the month, um, I've got 30 days left, I'm going to go on vacation, so I'm going to send that to you. And now you have 30 days, and I have zero days, obviously, because I've transferred my, my time to you. What Netflix could do is say, hey, cool, every time somebody transfers, 
the recipient is only going to get 80% of <clears throat> the time it gets transferred. So in that scenario of, and I'm, I'm going to screw myself with numbers here, but like 30 days, uh, I will actually transfer this. Instead of you receiving 30 days, you're going to get 80% of 30 days, which is probably something like 25 days or 26 days. Um, um, that, uh, or maybe even less than that, about 24 days. Uh, that means that in that scenario, Netflix has monetized that secondary market transaction where when I transfer 30 days to you, you only get 24 days, uh, which means that if I want to renew or if you want to renew, you're going to renew earlier in that scenario. So technically speaking, if you can uh, you know, spread this over a long duration, that increases their revenue because membership that have been transferred expire earlier. Does it make sense? Yes, yes, that's... Uh... That and that actually makes me think of another question. Um, when it comes to like the re reoccurring memberships, yes. Um, so the the power I see in reoccurring memberships it, it allows the content creators to create almost like a rental system, also where we could yeah. rent NFTs for a certain time period based on um, any time frame, mm -hmm. and um, once they use it it can go back to the owner, but in unlocked protocols, it's more just based on access. So they're just locked out of the content. Um, yeah. Is there, is there a way that we can actually have people own an NFT for a certain amount of time? And then it transfers back to the person who rents it to almost like a rental. System? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So that's actually one of the features that I, I love about unlock is we've decoupled ownership of an NFT and transfer right of that same NFT. So technically speaking, um, most of the time, by default, if you own an NFT, you can you have the right to transfer it. But what we've done at Unlock in the smart contract is we've created a role called the key manager. And the idea of the key manager is that's the person that has the transfer rights. So again, by default, <clears throat> if I buy a membership, I'm the one who has the transfer right. I'm also the key manager. So I'm both the key owner and the key manager. Now, if I want to lend my key to you, what I could do is transfer the key, but keep for myself the role of key manager. So now it's yours, it's in your wallet. So whenever you log in on a website, they can verify that you have it. It is marked as yours and completely yours. But I am the key manager, which means that I can at any point transfer it back to me and say, hey, sorry, you're, I mean, I'm done lending to you. I want to get it back so I can take it back from you in that scenario. Does it make sense? Yes, and I just want to say that's awesome. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's absolutely. Really exciting. And, and so there's actually multiple ways to think of this. So yes, the lending one is definitely a good one. It's like, okay, cool, I'm going to go on vacation. I, I'm going to lend you my Netflix account, but when I'm back, I want to make sure that I get it back, and that's the way to, that's the way to do that. The other cool use of this is around DeFi. So say I've got a very valuable NFT, one that is worth you know uh, thousands or tens of thousands of dollars or maybe, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. I want to keep the bragging right with me and have it in my hot wallet because when I log in on a website, it's with me. But I'm really worried about getting it stolen. Well, what I can do is transfer the key manager role to my hardware wallet that is a lot more secure. In that scenario, what's really cool is the fact that I can now brag around. And if my private key were to get stolen, well, you know what? They can't transfer the NFT to their wallet because technically the address that has the transfer right is my hardware wallet and it's not plugged in at all times and it's much more secure in that scenario. So that's one of the cool applications of that you know, same model where you decouple the ownership from the transfer rights. Cool. Is, is, are these uh, smart contract functionalities that have been added for the reoccurring memberships, is that currently in the upload it's, GitHub? Yeah. It's, it's the same contracts, exactly. The same contract supports okay. all of these things. And yes, it works as well for re reoccurring memberships. Cool. Awesome, awesome. Thank you again, Ryan and Nate, for those very productive questions, and Julian for those very clear and informational answers. Um, since we're at the half hour, just pass it, I want to just reset the room real quick for anybody who's arrived while we were in the depth of our conversation here. Um, you're at the Unlock Twitter space where we're discussing recurring memberships and subscriptions, which is a new feature that we added to Unlock Protocol just last week. So we invite anyone to um, 
request via speaker to come up and share why this new development might be exciting to you, ask any questions that are specific to your project. Um, even if it's specific to yours, other folks might learn and be able to apply the answers to theirs. So feel free to come on up and, um, you know, talk about what you're doing, share, share with us your ideas and your visions and how this might fit into them. Um, so we have Morena, would you like to introduce yourself and say a little bit about your project and ask any questions you have? Hi, yeah, Hi. my name is Morena Eddy. I am a, an artist, a community organizer and an entrepreneur. So I, I came into the Web3 space trying to figure out how to use the technology for the things I was already doing. Um, and a lot of my work is very community-based and relationship-based, even with my art. So I, I can't quite share on the projects that I'm doing yet, but I've been struggling trying to figure out how to create some kind of subscription-based or reoccurring way for me to continue my relationship with my collectors and to do certain things with them. So this morning I was just looking for, um, I typed into Twitter NFT subscriptions to see what people were doing or what they had come up with. And I saw you guys room. So I got really excited. Um, so I don't, I don't fully know everything about this yet, but I'm really excited to explore it and it's going to make what I'm doing a lot easier. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm, I'm really excited. Yay for serendipity. <laughs> we're really happy that you were you found us and you're here so thank you for coming on stage and and sharing and just telling us that that you're excited about it because we get excited when this resonates and fits squarely into what people are trying to achieve so yeah thank you very much for being here um rahul we have another speaker do you want to introduce yourself and say a little bit about your project ask any questions you have yeah, hi guys. Yeah, so similar to Morena, um, I'm involved in a startup, uh, but I can't say much about it now. Hopefully soon, hopefully by the next um, uh, space sessions, uh, we could go a bit deeper. But yeah, like this is great information. Uh, it's exciting information. It's a totally new space. Um, so I was actually kind of, I, I had the idea of, you know, recurring memberships and whether something could happen, but obviously I'm yeah, not into detail as to what Unlock Protocol has done. So it's great to see you guys do this. Uh, but I was just wanting to know what are your thoughts about the incentives for holders? So I think we all know, um, I think a primary motivation for a lot of people to get into the NFT was to profit from a lot of NFTs that they've invested in. So uh, from a recurring standpoint, there's a duration now that's fixed on an NFT. So uh, while I think this maybe complements the creator of the NFTs more, it, it, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. From the user standpoint, it's okay. My, my, my benefits has now been limited to a specific duration where I might struggle to find a buyer if I no longer benefit from the NFT since the time span is a shorter period, I guess. Yeah, if you get what I mean. So how do you plan on uh, tackling the incentive of, for the users? Yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely a good question. Um, so first, I mean, um, and it feels like the today I'm going to just, uh, 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 you know, reveal things that uh, are maybe not the biggest, uh, the, the biggest truth in the NFT world, but there is nothing in the NFT. I mean, the NFT object itself doesn't have to be something that appreciates in value. Of course, it is the case when it represents a collectible, like, you know, um, a, a rare, uh, you know, monkey, let's say. But in practice, the NFT standard itself is just a representation of non-fungible objects. And so in practice, that means unique objects. And some of these unique objects, yes, are rare and would appreciate in value if they're collectible, like say. But in practice, a lot of other objects are not that rare and don't actually are not necessarily expected to appreciate in value. Uh, and yet, I do think that the NFT format, if you want, is a very useful and a very practical one for a lot of different things. I do think that NFT memberships uh, with Unlock, yes, they could be valuable because they have, you know, scarcity. There is a limited amount of them because they represent something really unique that a creator offers to their community and kind of uh, allows for, you know, bragging rights in some way. 
but I don't expect all of them to be appreciating in value. Uh, so um, that's maybe the short answer. If you want to make something that's uh, retained value with Unlock, it's also very possible or retain appreci I mean, appreciated value is like you create a membership that has a limited amount of, of keys, as we call them, like pretty scarce, one where there is maybe an unlimited duration. So let's say, you know, it doesn't actually lose value over time. Uh, and in that scenario, you've made a, an NFT that's very similar to the one that, you know, um, apes and other uh, punks uh, are, are, are looking like. But I do think that in practice, a lot of NFTs could actually be extremely valuable, not from a financial perspective, but from a use case perspective. I do think tickets to conferences should be NFTs. And that way, they represent kind of a history of a little thing that you've been through. Another type of NFT that actually is valuable in practice, but not necessarily have financial value if you want, is the one through certifications. Uh, our friend at CDAA, which is kind of a, um, a certification authority for uh, financial advisors, uh, uses Unlock to uh, do certified um, you know, uh, certifications, basically, of people that have gone through uh, special training to be financial advisors. And I think that's actually a very good use case of Unlock in that scenario. Uh, there's been a bunch of chatter around uh, soul-bound NFTs. Well, Unlock is the perfect platform to deploy these soulbound NFTs. Uh, you can definitely create NFTs that are not transferable, um, even though they might have an expiration date and actually represent something about their owner. Um, maybe they've gone through KYC. Maybe they did attend a special event. Maybe they voted on a DAO. Uh, all of these characteristics that are really well represented as NFTs, uh, but are not necessarily meant to appreciate in value themselves. Great. Thanks, Julian. Yeah. Of course. Thanks, Julian. Yeah, and I think one thing I pulled out of that is um, this isn't the, the introduction and the op op optionality to offer recurring memberships and subscriptions doesn't have to be a either or uh, decision. It can be an and decision. So yes. as community builders and entrepreneurs, we can offer a lifetime pass for those uh, who want that, and we can offer recurring passes for uh, folks who that makes more sense for and create a, a more inclusive marketplace, potentially. Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. Awesome. We have uh, Angela is our next speaker. Oh, and as Angela's coming up on stage, I just want to point out that our friend Chris has been pinning a bunch of tweets to the top of the space to accompany their con our conversation here. So if you've missed anything and you want to catch up, feel free to scroll to the top and uh, scroll sideways to see all the stuff that he's pinned, um, different quotes and ideas from different folks, and share those out. Um, some of you have been mentioned in those, so a chance to share your voices. All right, now that I've given that update, Angela, please introduce yourself. Thanks for being here. Hey, uh, thanks for putting me up on stage. Um, I'm Angela. For those of you who don't know me, I am a developer, and you'll see my face around here often soon. Anyway, I, I just wanted to point out actually a connection between two of the things that we talked about already that I noticed. And that was the decoupling of, of ownership and transfer rates and um, a mechanism um, for circumventing royalties. And actually, what I was thinking was that you could you could actually use the the fact that you can keep that key manager um, position and role, um, yes. and 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 use that to dissuade people from trying to circumvent royalties um, by listing in other places. So if you wanted to, um, not, not that everybody's going to want to do that, but that the possibility is there to um, ensure that you can recapture those royalties um, by keeping that key manager role um, when you transfer ownership of an unlock token. So, so that would be a way, it would be scary though, because it means that, you know, I'm selling you this and then the minute you've paid me, I send it to you and then the next day, whoop, I take it back. Uh, and so technically I would steal your money doing this. But what could be done though on that front is something where there's kind of a, a third party smart contract with itself, the key manager. And that third party contract could be the one enforcing that the payment was made somewhere. So think of it kind of, I mean, it could be an escrow contract, but something where both the buyer and the seller say, yes, okay, 
this is fine. I was, I mean, the fees have been paid, uh, or you know, uh, the smart contract initially could actually be the one verifying this. And then in that scenario, the, the 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 middle contract would be the one kind of enforcing transfers or accepting transfers only if um, the, the 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 fees were paid in that scenario. Uh, obviously, there is a bunch of exploration to be done here, but I right. agree with you that it's definitely something that can be uh, that can be done. Yeah, interesting. Got me thinking. Anyway, thanks. Yeah. Of course. Thank you, Angela. We appreciate you being here. And we're so excited to see more of your PFP and your face and hear your voice <laughs> around the community even more. So thank you for being up there and bringing your ideas. Um, and just to kind of reset the room just a little bit, we're still talking about NFTs and how they're powering recurring memberships and subscriptions for folks who are using the Unlock protocol. Uh, it's a new feature we added to the protocol last week and um, inviting anybody who wants to share what this means to them and your projects or ask any questions about how you might be able to use this feature and the protocol in your projects. We welcome to the stage. Um, as we're waiting for anybody else to come up. Uh, oh, Marina, did you have a question? I saw your hand go up. <laughs> yeah, um, I was curious, you know, I didn't get to dig into your guys' website and look through everything yet, but I was wondering if there was something embedded that would allow me to gather data from my NFT holders if my subscription, my subscription was based around sending physical items. Yes, there is. Uh, Julian or Chris, you want to speak to the metadata functionality and kind of co collecting metadata on the NFT purchase process? I feel like I've spoken a lot, so definitely Chris, but I, Chris is tweeting, so I don't know if he can uh, multitask. Oh, I, can, I can multitask. It's one of Let's the do that. Do. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Chris on stage. Let's hey, hear Chris. Uh, Chris, I uh, look after marketing here for uh, Unlock Labs and uh, the, uh, the Unlock Dialing community. Um, so, Morena, great question. And one of the things that we see a lot is folks wanting to have different bits of metadata around the particular folks who are uh, purchasing or acquiring an NFT. And so when you are configuring uh, that checkout as a creator, uh, with a little bit of uh, configuration, you can pull in really any kind of arbitrary information you are looking for. So if it is, you know, name and address, if folks are doxxed, um, if it is email address, those types of things you can get, especially if you are going to be sending out uh, physical items. We see this a lot with folks who are signing up for um, events and things like that. The event organizers definitely want to be able to stay in touch and remind folks to show up and things like that. And so they'll offer or often ask for things like email addresses and the like so they can keep reaching out to them. So it is a um, it's a small bit of configuration. We have a number of bits of um guides and such in the docs that can help set that up but it is really just you know specifying those things that you want in the checkout process and the unlock um, checkout flow will automatically prompt for those things once you have said hey you know i'm looking for for these kinds of metadata and then you'll be able to see it as a creator in your dashboard when you look at all of your members you'll be able to see their respective bits of metadata and you can also pull that down as a csv or export it in some other ways if uh, you need to be able to use it in other systems so you should be all set oh that's so exciting thank you um just to give context two of the things that are, are in the works for me is one NFT clothing, selling NFTs and people getting clothing. Oh, I got muted. Are you, are you here? Can you hear me now? Yes, we yep. can. Yeah, we Good. can hear you. Yeah, that was, that was me in my, uh, trying to put my phone down. I hit the wrong button. My bad. Sorry. Multitask, <laughs> multitask, Chris. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's okay. The other thing I do, though, is I, I do a lot of youth camps. So I've been exploring the idea of what does it look like for me to do NFT youth camps where, you know, um, parents and guardians can buy, um, how do you say, basically buy uh, 
what they need to enter the camp through an NFT, be able to register through an NFT. So I just wanted to share that to give you guys that context. But this is really exciting for me. So thank you. Super, super cool. Wow, it's exciting to hear those types of use cases happening in the, the combination of NFTs and IRL and, you know, even in broadening out to the to the rest of society, you know, the, uh, um, the folks who might not have been exploring NFTs and Web3 yet and, you know, soon soon to really see these things, these mechanisms coming into their everyday lives in ways that are really familiar with to us. Um, but just a, a new way of doing the same thing we've been doing for for decades. Um, so, Marina, thank you for sharing that context. Again, it's good to offer uh, examples for people to relate to. All right. Um, so, and one more note I wanted to make for Marina and any other creators who are in the crowd today. Um, we have a set of guides for creators in addition to our developer documentation. Um, if you go to unlock-protocol.com and you click on creators at the top, or if you just add a slash creators to our URL, you'll find a growing collection of guides that we've um, created and designed specifically for creators. If you go to the docs section, which is at docs.unlock-protocol.com, those are more technical documents um, geared a little bit more towards developers. So um, absolutely welcome developers and creators, however you identify to explore both, but just wanted to call the attention to those resources for folks who are interested in starting to try this out. Um, so since we're ending the near, uh, nearing the end of our hour here. Just wanted to um, remind everybody that we're talking about recurring subscriptions and memberships with NFTs powered by Unlock Protocol. And um, to uh, put one more question out there to um, the team, Unlock team, for folks who haven't heard, um, if someone in the crowd today is already using Unlock, what would they need to do in their unlock account to get started with recurring subscriptions and memberships. Um, and then kind of the same thing for, for folks who aren't yet using unlock, how would you recommend them getting started? Um, in addition to seeing those guides and documentation that I just mentioned, um, Chris, Patrick, Julian from the team, anyone want to take that one just to give anybody a, how to get started with this if they're excited and interested. Yeah, um, I can take that one. Um, first is you need a, a lock uh, version 10, which is the latest version that we uh, released a couple of weeks ago. Um, so unless you already have a lock, you probably need to deploy a new one, uh, a V10. Um, and then make sure when you deploy it uh, that you use an ERC20 as the base currency. And I think we have a message on the Discord from Nate. Uh, your lock is using uh, Rinkeby ETH. So it's not using an ERC20 for this, uh, just ah. for context. Nate. That's that's why you're you're not seeing the, uh, the, the membership option, the recurring okay. option, sorry. Um, so yes, V10, make sure you use uh, an ERC20 membership. Um, and then um, the last aspect is obviously make sure that you have an expiration date, uh, you know, a duration of you know a week, a day, a month, uh, but it cannot be unlimited. If you have all of these things, uh, you should be you should be able to get started. Obviously, you should hang out in Discord if you have any questions. Uh, we're here to help, and and we're making, you know, we're making good progress on documentation, as Tim just said uh, for the creators. Uh, we're, we have more and more, and obviously, any question you ask is very good signal for us that we need to improve the docs and what kind of docs we need to improve. So um, never be shy; just ask. That helps us get better, not just you. Thanks, Julian. Nate, did you have a follow up? Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, sorry if this seems like a noob question, but just to be clear, no. um, the mainnet ETH, ERC20, is that, would that work? No, no. Uh, if you use mainnet ETH, that's the same as Rinkeby ETH. You need to use, uh, these are the base currencies of the chain. You need to use an ERC20, uh, okay. so a special kind of contract that would do that. It's basically all of the other tokens, but... The, but the default ones, uh, which are on the ETH chain. If you really want to use something that is like ETH, uh, there's actually something called wrapped ETH, uh, W E T H. Yeah. Uh, exactly. That is the ESC20 version of ETH on any network. Okay. Cool. Okay, I see. I see. Thank you so much. Of course. Awesome. Thank you, Nate. 
And all noob questions are, are welcome in addition to all veteran experienced questions because um, we ad acknowledge and admire the courage to ask all and any questions. And so we appreciate it because. Okay, I'm sorry. Just one more. One more. And yeah, yeah. Bring it on. Bring it on. I, I noticed that. I noticed throughout the entire, you know, new user experience, it looks like DAI is the, um, the, kind of default and if not if i'm not mistaken it's kind of the recommended one uh would you say that that's pretty much correct based on its gas fees or or because it seems like throughout the the whole user experience it defaults to dai die um what are y'all's thoughts on that um that's a very good point uh yes so die is a stable coin it's the uh it's the most permissionless of those stable coins um so that's the one we show by default on mainnet uh, but again, if you go if you go for um, any RC20 that should work, we actually have a, a section in the docs, and that reminds me that we probably need to make that more prominent. Uh, that explains how you can use you know any RC20 as long as you know the address of the contract uh, of the contract itself. Awesome, thank you. Of course, and feel free to. I mean, I know you're on Discord, but uh, feel free to ask the questions there. We'll, 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 I'll can send you links and and, and more there. Thanks, Nate. All right. Well, we have about five more minutes left, so I want to invite anybody who hasn't gotten their question answered yet to come up on stage, or if they haven't shared what you'd like to share yet, we'd love to hear you. Um, how about Mr. Wildenfree? Welcome back. What's up, buddy? Hey, hey. Peace and blessings, you all. How is everything? Doing very well. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. No doubt, no doubt. Um, I was hoping to actually chime in a bit earlier, so actually, um, so I could hear the full um, show. Um, but I got caught up with a couple of things. Um, while I do have you all, though, I did have a couple of questions. Um, might be a bit technical, um, but I'm curious to know um, what are you all's um, thoughts on, um, I guess, unlock protocol expanding beyond uh, just the evm and like you know potentially uh working with other blockchains and um are you all familiar with um i guess the because what what it looks like is that i guess with eth 2.0 that things will be moving from evm to ewasm um which is the ethereum web assembly are you all familiar with that yeah i, I i'm not Sure. That, I mean, that was initially the plan. I, I think at this point, this has been uh, this has been uh, pushed, uh, and and my understanding is been pushed far enough that it's not likely to happen anytime soon. Um, but yeah, no. Um, regarding any you know other um, um, regarding other ecosystems, obviously, as the protocol, we want to go everywhere. The challenge is like we're. I mean, we're growing team, seven people, but still a fairly small team. And, and the endeavor of rewriting the whole protocol for other ecosystems, um, whether it's, you know, Solana, which is the one that a lot of people ask for, uh, near, uh, you know, block stacks. Um, we have a lot of people asking for all of these things. At this point, we don't have the bandwidth. Uh, it's just too hard for such a small team to actually do these things. Uh, we know that the EVM is the most dynamic, the most active one, um, for not just users, but even developers. And, and obviously, since we can't build everything, we need to rely on people having built some stuff. Um, at this point, I want to tell you, yes, we want to go everywhere. Um, I would lie to you if I told you that we have the bandwidth to do that. Um, if if you're interested in helping, please jump in. Uh, it feels like this is also kind of thing, something that the DAO could you know support and, and push forward. Um, so yeah, please, please help us. Uh, but I, I would lie to you if I told you we have the bandwidth to do that. Sure thing. Yeah. Um, and, and I know that was probably a really grandiose ask. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just something that I had in mind. And, you know, I'm always uh, one that's really um, excited to think about the possibilities of the future and, uh, and what that actually means for a project of this capacity. Um, but, yeah, no, it definitely makes sense. It's very understandable that, you know, it's probably still very early um, mm. and, you know, it will take time as well as you know additional resources and and assistance in making those things possible um but uh, yeah i was just curious if those things were even um kind of on your radar or what you know what you all's thoughts would be in, in regards to that um but yeah okay uh, i think that that's uh the primary question i have in mind so 
but yeah, uh, um, I guess I would say there is there is actually another thing. Um, and forgive me if this is a question that was already asked and answered. Um, however, let's say with uh, the unlock protocol, is it possible to have it to where, um, like I have one lock that functions to establish some type of, uh, you know, membership um, kind of accessibility through my website via web th- Webflow, and then mm-hmm. to use that same lock for another um, access point, um, say, like, for instance, yes. the last, yes? Yes, short answer is yes, and I'm going to have to jump. I've got another call starting in a couple of seconds, but absolutely, uh, yes. Uh, that's actually one of the goals of the protocol is to decouple the membership status from any specific application. So one of the examples that I give all the time, there's a membership on my blog. Obviously, you can access some content there, and I'm speaking too fast. Uh, I also have a benefit for these members to be able to be displayed as part of my video calls. I use a virtual webcam, and I, hi- you know, I, I highlight some of these members there. So it really is possible to, uh, for per your answer, per your question, decouple the membership from a specific, from a special, uh, from a special thing. Awesome. Cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate. Absolutely. It. Of course. All right. I'm going to have to jump, but it's been a pleasure to chat with everyone. I, I think uh, Tim and Chris will uh, will wrap this up in a couple of minutes, but see you all everyone soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Julian, Bye-bye. for being here. And uh, thank you, Mr. Wildenfree, for your questions and everybody else who came up on stage. Your participation is very much appreciated. This was one of our most awesome spaces yet. So thanks for being a part of it. We're very much grateful for all your presence, all your participation, and we hope to see you again when we're back here in Twitter Spaces in two weeks. We do this every other Wednesday, basically, so keep an eye out on our Discord. Uh, If you're not already in there, we'd love to have you. You can get a taste of how Unlock Protocol works by just joining the Discord and getting your role as a member. And yeah, we got lots more to, to build and lots more to talk about in the future. So we hope to see more of your beautiful PFPs in this space next time. Chris, got any final words or anybody else from no, the team? No, just thank you, everybody, for uh, spending the hour with us. We are uh, always there in the Discord. Um, and so if you have any questions about NFTs, subscriptions, your project, creators, developers, um, jump on over uh we don't bite uh too much and uh no happy to uh happy to have you all and again thanks for uh thanks for taking the time great to meet you all absolutely and we'll be posting the recording of this afterwards in case anybody wants to return to the recording to catch anything take notes on anything you might have missed um in case you didn't make it through the whole thing so thanks again everyone have a wonderful wonderful wednesday peace and blessings as Mr. Wild and Free so graciously offered earlier. Hope you all take care, be well, and hug somebody today to feel the love. I think we could all use a little bit of that. So thanks everybody. See you next time.